Welcome back everybody. In the last video we did not have anything to remove this last bearing cap with or the back bearing cap. They thread this with a 3 quarter 16 that you could then put a puller on. Now my pullers here are just not quite wide enough. I don't really have that much real estate here. I'm only probably about half to maybe five eighths of an inch on either side of what of where this cap comes. And I'd like to be more out in here with it. So what I think I'm gonna try first is actually just putting my slide hammer, since that has the same thread in there, and see if I can get it to just slide hammer up out of there. And then from there, we should be able to pull the crank. Well, that actually fit down in there really well. It's nice and snug in there. Now, there's not a lot of thread engagement in there. There's only probably five or six threads. I don't think this is that hard of a press fit, but we'll see how it goes. If it starts going too hard, maybe I'll pull this out and look for a different setup. So before we start slide hammering here, there's two flat screws, one here and one here. And looking at the parts book, it looks like they go all the way down through into the block. So we'll see how tight these are. I'll we'll have to get a wrench on here. There we go. Nice and covered in oil. You can see how that would reach well past in there. Get this other one out here. Probably need that wrench again. There it goes. All right, now with those out of the way, we should be free to start slide hammering and seeing if that wants to move out of there. Okay, with the bearing cap off, the bearing actually stayed on the crank here. Pull that out once. A little bit of wear where the crank has spirals. There, I don't believe there's actually a seal there. Or maybe that seal is supposed to be in here. Either way, it's not there. Take a look at the crank here. Crank looks pretty good. If you guys are hearing noises in the background, it's just my daughter. She's out here helping me today. She's about just under five months right now. So just learning to talk to herself a little bit. Are you a little camera shy? You're going to hide yourself? It's okay. Well, that leads us to the fun part of lifting this crank out of here. Um, I don't know what it weighs. I'm sure it's heavy. There's a lot of gravity in there. Um, I'm debating on whether or not I want to try and lift it out by hand.
Well, I almost have to believe that this engine was overhauled recently before it was parked. Because there is virtually no wear in the bearings. I mean, they all look fantastic, and I'll have no issue putting any of these back in. But the fun part is going to be, now that all this is apart, we need to figure out how to get all of these pistons and liners out without A, hurting the piston, and B, hurting the block. With the crankshaft suspended here, just kind of wiping all the journals up. I think the center main, or number three main, is going to be the determining factor on whether or not we use this crank. Not sure if you guys can hear that, but I can just scratch and pick up some of the rust there. And on the bottom side, we have a little more rust. So, like I said in the last video, we'll let the machinist make the call on whether or not he thinks that'll clean up. But, we do have a really nice set of bearings. So, if this will, or if all these journals will clean up, I'd like to put them back in these bearings. Mainly because bearings aren't available new anymore. Anything you're going to find is going to be new old stock. With the crankshaft out of the way now, we should be able to pull this front cover. It is aligned slightly on the cam bearing, and there are a couple alignment dowels. That's why we weren't able to pull it off with the crank still on there, because it needs to come forward first. So let's get that out of the way. So I'm getting ready to remove all the bearings. I just kind of wanted to clean them up quick just to make sure that I am happy with everything I see. And really everything I am seeing is just a little staining. If you take just a break, some brake clean, just a, you know, a cloth towel or a rag, they clean up fairly well. I'd have no problem reusing any of these, even the rod bearings, same thing. They do have some oil and a little bit of moisture in them, but once we spend just a little bit of time, especially once the bearings are out, we'll be able to reuse these no problem. One other thing to note, Cat did use shims. So we'll have to keep these shims in order. So these shim packs are actually really cool. There are a bunch of different layers and thicknesses of steel. And it even looks like there might be a copper or bronze one in there. Or maybe even a couple. And then on the corners there, they just either soldered or possibly used lead to stick them all together. So by using a plastic hammer and just kind of working the bearing back and forth, I was able to get it rocking enough on these dowels here just to pick it up and out of there. I don't know how else you'd really get to them. They're pretty much flush. It's hard to get anything underneath of them. So I just took my time. It's kind of why I didn't record it. It just, I probably spent the last 20 minutes just pulling five bearings out, but just slowly working back and forth. Same with these rods, they got the same thing, except these will be even more tricky to get to without dinging them up. That's the main thing, is make sure we don't ruin anything here. So, I think I'm going to keep working on trying to get rod bearings out. I noticed, oh, there, 
that one came out without even putting up a fight. Let's see if we can find a part number on this guy. Just not quite legible. We'll get that put with number two here. But yeah, we'll keep working on getting those out. This rod has actually stuck. You know, this one actually pivots back and forth. Number two does not. Three and four move as well. But we'll have to see about what we want to do for driving the sleeves, pistons, and rods out. Either as an assembly, or if we want to try and drive pistons through the sleeves first. I haven't quite decided. Um... It'll kind of depend on, once we get the bearings out, what wants to move and what doesn't. If the sleeve wants to move easier, I'll, I'm, I'll gladly take the whole works out. It's another reason for kind of leaving in the studs in the head. It gives me a little bit of room for the sleeves to walk out. There. Didn't mar any surfaces up. Should clean up well. Tell you what guys, this made me work for it. Those bearings didn't come out nearly as easy as any automotive engine I've ever worked on. I know this is heavy duty and obviously a lot older and things are designed differently. But when you put a dowel in there, it can really hold that bearing in because you can't just roll them in roll them out type of thing so after shattering a couple blocks of wood I was able to get number three here to go down I'm gonna go back to number two and then for one and four being that the sleeves don't really want to move or at least with me just taking a brass drift going around them they didn't seem like they wanted to move and that might not be enough to actually pull them what I'm going to try and do is I may turn the block over and just run a hone through the cylinder just to clean up the rust and then flip it back over to get these last two out. That way I can make my sleeve puller, get the sleeves pulled, get the rest of the studs out of this block that need to come out. Uh, these main studs will stay because my machinist wants all the main caps with it as well. But we will get all that done and then get this headed to the machine shop so here you can see we were able to get piston three out get the rod through there I'll bring you up here the skirts actually don't look too bad rings aren't froze Maybe a top ring might be. That could possibly be cleaned up and used again. Not sure what this corrosion would clean up like on top of the piston here. But in order to get these other ones out, what I'm going to do is try and clean a lot of this corrosion out of here. Basically give the piston a clean start once it actually does start moving. I was unable to get this one to move. We don't have very far to go with that one. I might actually try and drive that down and then see if I can clean that lip up. Uh, same with number four. Look at number three here. It had a little bit of stuff to move out of the way in order to come out. But I think that's what I'm gonna do, clean that up. And let this, I'll probably let it soak, put some diesel fuel in there, just to give it the best chance possible. And then from there, we should be able to get all four of them out, pull the sleeves. But I think that's going to wrap this up, guys. So thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. You know, Cash, you look like you had a hard day. What do you think? Should we go home? Can I go home? Well, let's go.